Okay, young adults. Sorry, I'm not here today. Um, my son Elliot is sick with strep throat, so I was forced to stay home and watch videos or watch movies and play video games all day. Very tough. So I don't want you to miss out on calculus. Uh, you should have this paper in front of you. And I'm going to go over just a couple rules for trigonometry that you should know in terms of limits. The reason why we need these is because trig limits don't usually work out as nice as algebra limits. Uh, for instance, just again to do a simple example. If I told you, hey, we're going to do limit x goes to 4 of x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. If you put 4 into there, you do get 0 divided by 0, right? That's what you get, which means that something has to cancel. Okay, That's only a rule with algebra, like polynomials and things. Um, and you can see that we can factor, so that's super sweet right there. And that cancels out. If you drop a 4 into there, you get 8. That's your answer. But with trig, if we go to this very first example here, if you put 0 into there, you get sine of 0, which everyone knows is 0, divided by 0. Again, you get sine of 0 over 0, right? That's 0 over 0. So that's not your answer. Um, you need to know what that's approaching, and I don't have any very fancy trick to show you what's going on other than to show you the graph of sine of x over x. That's what I've graphed down here, so check this out. As I plug in values close to zero, so like this is one, this is two here, right? If you plug in one, you get here. If you plug in 0.5, you get here. You plug in 0.1, you get here. 0.01, you get here. And you can see that this side is just going towards that value there. And I know it's hard to tell with these boxes, but each, each one of these boxes is a quarter. Like that's 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, and this box up here is one. So the y value this is approaching on both sides is one. Okay. And again, if you graph it, you can see it. That's what I just showed you there. But you're just going to memorize that rule. You're going to remember that as x approaches zero, sine x over x approaches one. If you plug in values close to zero on both sides, you will get up values close to one uh, on both sides. All right. You can check it out on the calculator if you want, but that's our rule. So I'm not just going to ask that basic rule. I'm going to drop down here real quick to something like number – let me see. Where's a, where's a super easy one? Okay, like number 11. All right. Um, the whole point of a limit here, again, you're just going to try to plug in zero. And if you try to plug in zero, you get sine of zero, which is zero, times cosine of zero, which is one, over zero. And that does give you zero divided by zero. Okay? Now, remember, that means something weird could be happening. There's probably a hole. But the problem is we can't cancel anything out. We can't do our little algebra tricks to get something to cancel. So the basic idea is to rearrange the limit a little bit. So that right there is the same thing as that. That's just fraction rules, right? Don't freak out. Okay. That green limit is the same thing as this limit right here. I've just separated the sine x over x. Um, and the reason why that's super sweet is now I can look at each of these separately. Well, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, if you recall way up here, that's our rule, that equals 1. Okay? And that's what's given us the 0 over 0, by the way. So, But because we know it approaches 1, because we know it approaches – are you freaking kidding me? I'm having technical issues. Wake up, Penn. There we go. Because we know it approaches 1, that is just a 1. And the rest of it I can plug 0 into. But cosine of 0 is 1, so you get 1 over 1 right there. But that's 1 times 1 over 1, and that is just 1. So if you graph this function close to 0, you'll see y values closer and closer to 1. That's what we just did. So the basic trick... Uh, when trying to evaluate a limit that has trig in it, is if you get 0 over 0, you're going to try to rewrite it so you get either this rule, okay, try to get sine x over x because that's going to become a 1, um, if we're approaching 0 specifically, or we're going to try to get this other rule, which is the second rule in the box up here, which is this. So again, I just graphed this function, 1 minus cosine x over x, it looks like this graph right here. But there's a hole right there. Okay, the reason why well, I missed that, but okay. 
the reason why there's a hole is because if you try to put zero into that function, you get one minus cosine of zero over zero, which is one minus one over zero, which is zero over zero. Okay, so that function gives you back zero over zero if you try to plug in zero. So normally, again, we do a bunch of algebra to simplify that down. You can't do it with trig, so I'm just showing you what the graph looks like so you can tell me that as x approaches zero, both sides of this graph are headed towards that hole, which has a y value of zero. Right, so our two trig rules that you're going to try to get if you have a trig limit and you get zero over zero is you're going to try to rearrange things to get this, or you're going to try to rearrange things to get this. Okay. Uh, number three isn't really like a special like limit or anything. You should just know that the arc tangent graph looks like this curve down here. The reason why the arc tangent, which is the same exact thing as this, okay, arc tan and tan inverse, that's how you read that, are the same function. Okay, the reason why it looks like that is because if you graph tangent of x, not tangent inverse, just tangent, the usual tangent, it has asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. It looks like this. I graphed this for you in class a couple days ago. That's what that looks like. So the inverse of that has to flip over the y equals x line. Well, that looks like this. That's how you find inverses. It switches all the x and the y's. And when you do that, you get a graph that looks like this red graph right here. It's going like this. Okay. But I'm only dropping this in here so you know this. Because this graph over here, tangent, has a vertical asymptote at pi over 2, because tangent goes straight up at pi over 2, then the inverse of tangent, or arc tangent, must approach pi over 2 horizontally, because that's the relationship. So as I approach infinity on arc tangent, if I plug in bigger and bigger values here, the y values just get closer and closer to pi over 2. And again, that's a consequence of the tangent graph having a vertical asymptote at pi over 2. If I approach negative infinity, you can see this graph is going down here. That's the same thing as this line over here. That's approaching negative pi over 2. So sideways, it has a horizontal asymptote and negative pi over 2. And again, I'm showing these rules because you're just going to memorize these. This, these aren't ones that you're going to have to like prove or, or do a bunch of work for. You're just going to memorize them. So what I'm going to do right now in this video is go through all the problems on the bottom of this paper. What I think you should do, though, is try them first and then come back and watch the video and see what's going on. So take a second to pause it and try number four and see how you do. Okay. Welcome back. I imagine you paused it. Good job. Um, if you try to plug zero into this, you're going to get zero divided by zero, okay? which is undefined, but that's not the answer to our limit. Right? I'm asking you, what is it approaching? But if sine of x over x, this is the rule that I told you to memorize, if that limit approaching zero is one, and this is just the flip of that rule, then this limit has to equal just one over one, the flip of one, which is just one. Okay, so even if you flip it, it's still just one. Nothing, not too big a deal. Uh, number five. As we approach zero, if you plug in zero, you get one minus one over zero, which is zero over zero. Okay, but all this is, is the same rule as number two up here. I've just flipped the subtraction. So the rule we have is this. One minus cosine x over x, if we are approaching zero, that equals zero. That's our rule that we memorize. Well, all this is, if you flip that subtraction, that's just negative one minus cosine. That's all that is on top there. So this just equals negative zero, but that's just zero. All right, number six. Um, it looks like the same rule. We've got the sine x over x here, right? But I'm trying to trick you. X is approaching pi. If you plug pi into there, you get sine of pi, which is zero, over pi. And now remember, like our last quiz, that does not equal, it's not undefined, it's not D and E. Zero divided by pi, that's just zero. That's just a number. There's no work required, you just get a number. Cool. Uh, seven and eight are weird little, little rules, but it basically is this. Okay, so imagine, again, if I used a different variable for a second, 
just to do like a little substitution. This is our rule though. So I'm changing my x's to u's from my first rule. If u is approaching zero, sine of u over u approaches one. Okay. So what that's saying is whatever's in here, whatever's down here, as long as it's approaching zero, that's going to spit out a one. So when I ask a question like seven, the problem is up top we have a four X and down the bottom we just have an X. I want it to be the same thing as what's in those parentheses. So I'm gonna do this incredibly dangerous thing. Well, <laughs> make my pen stop working. And still it doesn't work. Come on, man, there we go. I'm gonna put four right down there with that X. Now there's a 4x up top and a 4x down the bottom. Now this looks an awful lot like my rule. But you're saying you've changed the problem, Mr. Smith. You can't just put a 4 down the bottom. I can just put a 4 down the bottom if I also put a 4 in the numerator. I'm just going to put it up here like this, though. Those 4s technically cancel out, so it's really just sine of 4x over x still. But the reason why I'm doing that is I really want to look at it like this. Right? Those are fours. That's sine 4x over x. And I know, so down here, look, we have this question mark here. We have this question mark here. And technically, we're supposed to have this question mark here. But as long as this thing here goes to zero and these things up here are going to zero, we're okay. So if x is going to zero, which it is, sine of 4x, 4x is going to zero. Oh, there's an x in here. I messed that up. Okay. And this 4x is going to zero. So even though there's 4x is in there, it doesn't really matter. This is still going to equal 1 because we're going to get 0 over 0, and our rule was that that just goes to 1. So technically, this 4 is still here. So this is just 4 times that box, which is a 1. So that's just a 4. All right. Um, this next one, I'm going to write this again somewhere. But my main plan here, check out this craziness I'm allowed to do. I'm going to rewrite that as the limit as x goes to 0 of the sine of, was it 6x or 3x on top? 6x over 1, basically, times sine of 3x over 1, like that, or 1 over sine of 3x. So that's the same thing still. And remember, I, we really want to get sine of something divided by the same thing, and we need them both to go to 0. So all I'm going to do here, look, I'm going to be super brave. I'm just going to put a 6x down there. But if I put a 6 down bottom with the x, I got to put a 6 on top. I, I also, because I just put that x down the bottom, I have to put an x on top too. But I'm going to put that x over here. Now I'm allowed to do that because I'm multiplying, okay? So I could put an x on the bottom and an x on top. And over here, I'm also going to put a 3 because I want that 3x to be there. But if I put a 3 on top... I've also got to put a 3 on the bottom. I'm going to put that way out here. I'm allowed to put the 3 way over there because this is just multiplication. And everybody knows, right, like 4 times 2 times 7 is the same thing as 7 times 4 times 2. That's multiplication. That's subtraction, right? It doesn't matter what order you're doing it. So I could put a 3 down here if I wanted to, but I really want to put it out front with that 6 because what I'm trying to do is to create my rule. Here's what I know. As x goes to 0... My first parentheses, well, this is just a 2, right? Sine 6x six over 6x six is going to become sine 0 over 0. And I told you, that limit's going to go to 1. The limit over here, even though it's flipped, is going to go to 1 as well. We saw that in number 4. So this just equals 2 times 1 times 1, which is 2. Okay? I want to be very clear here. We are not just canceling out stuff. You can't just cancel out sine and x and get 6 over 3. Like, remember, canceling like that is really division. So while it does work out to 6 over 3, it's not because we're canceling. Um, it's because of the trig rules we just used. All right. So let me see here. Let me see here. Let me see here. What do we got? Oh. Uh, if you drop 0 into here, you get cosine of 0, which is 1, minus cosine of 0, which is 1 squared. But that's just 1. So that's just 0 over 0. I'm not going to try to use my sine rule here. I see cosines here. So I'm going to factor a cosine out of the top. That becomes that, which leaves me with this right here. We're still approaching zero. 
I'm just trying to get one of my trig rules. And I'm going to put this side over x and this side over 1. Because I'm multiplying, I'm allowed to do that. So this equals the cosine of 0 over 1, that's just 1, times this thing right here as I approach 0, but we learned our rule up there in number 2, that goes to 0. So this is just 0. All right. Uh, I'm not going to do the rest of these here. Well, okay, we'll do them fine. Uh, 10 is similar to what we talked about uh, yesterday in class, today for me, because it's nighttime and I'm just making this video for you. Um, but if you're watching this on a Thursday, then we did this yesterday. So if X is going to infinity, I told you, think about what's the biggest thing on top and the biggest thing on the bottom. Well, this is kind of easy. Arc tangent is the biggest thing on top. It's the only thing on top. And arc tangent, as I approach infinity, goes to pi over 2, right? But x, on the other hand, the denominator is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So I essentially get pi over 2 divided by huge numbers, bigger and bigger and bigger. So pi over 2, which is like 1.57, divided by gigantic numbers that are getting bigger, is going to go to 0. Okay, 11 I already did. Um, but I told you, you really want to split this up. And that's time you're going to put the cosine out here. And that's how multiplication works. We're allowed to do that. You can't do that with pluses and minuses, but multiplication and fractions work nice. And that becomes 1 times 1, so that's just a 1. Whew, number 12. Uh, I'm approaching 0, and I got tangent x over x, but we don't have a rule for that. However, I know that tangent is just sine over cosine. And dividing by that x is really just putting a 1 over x out front, same thing. We're going to 0. So that right there, you are allowed to split this all up. Look at this incredible question I made up for you. As sine of x over x times 1 over cosine. That's the same thing as the question I asked you up there. The sine x over cosine of x is really the tangent. I just broke it apart specifically because I'm trying to get this rule right there. As I approach 0, sine x over x goes to 1. 1 over cosine of 0 is 1, so the limit is 1. And I know we're getting 1 and 0 a lot in these questions. It doesn't happen all the time. These are just the ones that I made up um, to show you how the rule, like you have to break apart things sometimes. All right. These last three are just tricks a little bit, okay? 13 is a little weird. I don't know how much this really matters to you. It's really not that super important of a question. Um, it's just a little bit weird. Calc teachers like to ask this, and I'm a calc teacher. So as x goes to infinity, this is what we got going on. This thing right here, this x, is going to become super duper big, right? That's, that's a math. It's a math term, super big. Um, dude, here we go. But we're going to have multiplied, right, times the sine of 1 over a huge number. But I hope this makes sense. We have something that's getting bigger times the sine of 1 over a huge number, which is basically going to 0. So we have something that is very, very big being multiplied by something that's really going to 0, but it's just getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we have this big number times a small number. This could work out one of two ways, okay? Or one of three ways, really. For instance, if I had a big number like this, Right? That is 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. That's a billion. Okay? If I multiply that by a tiny number like, I don't know, 0. 0.1, that spits out 100 million. Okay? So that's still a big number. But that's a case where the big number is winning. Okay? If I multiply a big number again, and this is really... A whole class I can go over this really good. So again, this question is not crazy important, just a little interesting. If I multiply this by a super duper tiny number, okay, so this is ten hundred thousands, uh, tens, hundred thousands, millions, ten million, hundred million, billions, uh, what, ten billions, hundred billions, trillionths, ten trillion, hundred trillion, quadrillionths. 10 quadrillions, 100 quadrillions is what that is. Yeah. Okay. It's just a super tiny number. When you multiply that by a billion, you're going to get 0. 0.0001, I think, or something along those lines. But you get a very small number. Okay. 
So it's possible that I have a big number times a small number and I still have a small, a big number. It's possible I have a big number times a small number and I get a really tiny number. What really matters is who is winning this respective fight, the thing that's getting big or the thing that's getting small. And talking about that uh, right now, we're not really equipped with that. This isn't really even a good question to put on here. But it turns out in this case, uh, the small thing wins. Uh, so, that's, so this thing right here gets really close to zero as this thing gets a little big, but not big enough to fight how small it gets. So this just goes to zero. Okay. This is a, this, I'm like, you should just strike this question from the record here. Okay. The answer is zero. Um, but let's not really worry about that too much. I hope what I did down here makes some sense, but if not, I wouldn't worry too much about it. 14 and 15 are tricks. Okay. This is me trying to mess with you. You see this one minus cosine X over X here, right? So kids always want to say, oh, that's going to go to zero. Cause that was our rule in number two. Remember? But the rule number two had X going to zero, not to infinity. Okay, so you got to pay attention to all the pieces. If X is going to go to infinity, now I told you to worry about what's the biggest thing on top versus the biggest thing on the bottom. Well, turns out the biggest thing on top is one because cosine of X can only go to one or less, right? So this top is either going to be something between one minus one or one minus negative one, which is two. So the numerator is either going to be between zero and two, just a small number. But the denominator is going to infinity. So you're gonna have, in this particular case, small numbers over huge, huge, huge biggest numbers, okay? What that does is it forces this whole thing, again, my pen, to go to zero. Okay, again, we're not going to zero up front, so we don't use the rule. You gotta think about, we're going to infinity, so you think about what's biggest on top, biggest on bottom. The same thing with 15. It looks like our rule sine x over x, so I get kids all the time like, ah, oh, it's one. But it's only one if x is approaching zero and x isn't approaching zero. X is approaching infinity, which means that the bottom is going to be gigantic, uh, huge, the hugest. And the top is just going to be a small number between one and negative one. So this also goes to zero. Okay. So what I'm going to do tomorrow I'm home with my sick son is I'm going to put on a TV show for him to relax. Uh, maybe he'll take a nap. And I'm going to post later today um, a quiz review, okay? And that quiz review will be, I guess, not for tomorrow, which will be Friday, um, since I'm not here today, okay? But I'll post that. I'll post an answer key, or maybe I'll post a video of me going through it so you guys can see what the quiz is going to look like. And in terms of the quiz review that's supposed to be today after school, um, and not the quiz review, the uh, quiz retake, we'll just do that next week sometime, okay? I'll, I'll pick a day, and we'll do it. That just gives you more, more time to prepare. All right, I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day, and I will see you hopefully on Friday is the plan.